Lots of people have been sounding the alarm that Gotham Knights is a bad game. And I really wanted to be able to make this video saying things have improved since launch and too many people were focusing on the bad and not enough on the good. Unfortunately, after playing the game for a while now, there are few things that can be considered good. The game is okay at best, but okay isn't something to be proud of or excited about. It's certainly worse than being good, but being okay just means it wasn't good enough to be good and it wasn't bad enough to be bad. Somehow, Gotham Knights fails to fail. Gotham Knights can be considered a spiritual successor to the Arkham franchise, and looking at the gameplay, it's pretty easy to see why. The story is not a continuation of the Arkham games, but Gotham Knights does very little to break away from the Batman game standard that Rocksteady Studios formalized. The game takes place after Batman is killed, and Batgirl, Red Hood, Robin, and Nightwing must work to ensure that Gotham doesn't fall into chaos. The gameplay of Gotham Knights is almost identical to that of Arkham City or Arkham Knight, with Gotham being a sandbox where the player can fight crime and explore. A notable difference between the two is that Gotham Knights has online co-op, but the co-op is limited to two players despite there being four playable characters. The developers have recently added a heroic assault mode which does support up to four players. I haven't played it myself, but my understanding is that it exists as a separate dungeon or raid-like experience battling through various floors and combat arenas. While I do stand by saying that Gotham Knights is similar to the Arkham games, the things that are different only succeed in making the game a worse experience. Gotham Knights tries to be like an MMO, with gear score, quests, enemies having visible health bars, and showing damage values when you land attacks. The combat framework is functionally similar, with timed attacks, dodging, and understanding attack properties, but feels stiff and clunky in Gotham Knights. The gear system consists of having three equipment slots, suit, melee weapon, and ranged weapon, and the only resource that you can gather is crafting materials that can be used to craft new equipment. However, after the first couple of hours, I didn't even think about crafting unless it was specifically required to finish a side quest. Often missions and side quests will reward you with gear that's better than the items you're able to craft, which quickly makes the crafting pointless. Even side quests that require you to craft gear reward you with better gear than what you crafted. If the big wig executives required that crafting be in the game, I think it could have been better implemented as only a means of unlocking cosmetic customizations of weapons and suits or different colorways. Which is a very easy suggestion to make because that system already exists in the game. Owned suits can be customized with different options for the cowl, emblem, gloves, boots, and you can apply a different colorway if you have it unlocked. When you craft a suit that's a new style, you unlock that style as a transmogrification option which can be applied to any suit. The only downside to using the transmog option is that you can't customize the transmog in the same way you can if you have the suit in your inventory. There's also a leveling up system implemented, and criminals around Gotham will scale with your current level. Leveling up awards skill points that can be spent in one of four skill trees, but the skill trees also feel bloated with unnecessary selections. There are some new combat techniques to learn in the skill tree, but there's an equal amount of percentage upgrades like 10% damage reduction or increased critical chance. Sure, there was a skill tree in the Arkham games, but they almost always focused solely on unlocking new abilities or techniques to implement in combat. The skill trees in Gotham Knights are small in comparison and still manage to feel half-baked and padded with filler. As a result, leveling up feels hollow despite the game trying to make you feel good about it with a fanfare and a spark of particle effects. Some side quests have level recommendations, but if you exceed that recommendation, they don't scale the same way criminals around Gotham do. As a result, if you do a lot of side questing, you can find yourself overleveled for a scripted side quest that tries to be dramatic and interesting, but feels empty and trivial because you're overpowered. But by far, my biggest issue with Gotham Knights is the visible lack of polish as you spend more time in the game. Animations can vary from stiff to disorienting, and traversal can be inconsistent at best and buggy at worst. Whenever I reach a point where I find I'm genuinely enjoying playing the game, something always happens that breaks my immersion and reminds me that Gotham Knights is fundamentally flawed at the programming level. It's almost impossible to get through 30 minutes of gameplay without an audible sigh of disappointment. Things like getting stuck on a wall or corner, doing a ranged attack from inches away because the takedown prompts didn't appear, or attempting to traverse Gotham only to have the grappling hook or jump go in the opposite direction you want to go. It feels like a majority of the grappling hook issues are the result of grapple targets being assessed based on the direction your character model is facing, rather than only those in the direction the camera is facing. Something else I noticed is that there appears to only be one asset type for thin surfaces like perches, high beams, and fences. There were many times where I would be stuck perched on a waist-high fence rapidly turning left and right because I'm not holding the parkour button to drop down. But even that behavior is inconsistent. 
because sometimes I'll be on a perch trying to line up a takedown and walk right off, ruining my attempt at stealth. And speaking of the parkour button, why is sprinting a separate button? I don't think it's too much of a stretch to assume that if the player is sprinting as fast as possible, they also want to vault over and climb obstacles. Especially when that's how sprinting functioned in the Arkham games. There are many gripes that I have that I think bring down the overall experience, but there are too many to talk about here without just devolving into a rant. For the sake of keeping this video a reasonable length, I'll just list them here on the screen. Feel free to pause and read them. It's still mind-boggling to me the volume of things in Gotham Knights that are so close to the Arkham games, but lack the extra 10 to 20% to cross the threshold into good. I can see how one could make the argument that maybe the vision for Gotham Knights was not to exactly copy the Arkham game formula because that would be boring or uninspired. But in my opinion, that argument fails to hold any weight when the things that they did change are copied straight from the boring and uninspired AAA RPG formula. It's like Gotham Knights is a living, can I copy your homework meme. They took the Arkham franchise, removed a few things to make it different, but then filled in the space they created with popular tropes that bring the overall quality down. It may not sound like I enjoyed playing Gotham Knights, but honestly, I do have fun when I play it. I do enjoy the gameplay when it functions as expected, and I do enjoy the Bat Family character interactions and world building that takes place. But I can't in good faith recommend people pick it up at retail price. I want to emphatically enjoy the game, but sometimes it feels like it's actively trying to remind me of its flaws. Gotham Knights is, at best, an okay standalone title, but it's undeniably bad when compared to the games it's clearly drawing inspiration from. It feels like a lazy execution of an existing formula that trips at the finish line in too many areas to ignore. I'd say that if you're at all interested in Gotham Knights, wait until you can pick it up on sale. Thanks for watching, take care, and remember, keep having fun.